friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Mary and I'm so happy to have you here for today's video where we're gonna be talking about how we serve as our own self-saboteur, how we are limiting our manifestations and ways you can make this mental shift so that you may stop limiting your manifestations. Let's talk about it. So first of all, let's talk about, sorry, I'm gonna get cozy for this conversation. Let's talk about why we are limiting our manifestations. And actually maybe I should rewind and explain what I mean by limiting our manifestations. Something that I, that I reference often is this idea of don't set the bar so low that your universe cannot help but step over it. Meaning some people want to manifest really big things, like they're manifesting marriage with a specific person or a million dollar salary when right now all they have is like 85,000 or they're manifesting a brand new Porsche or they're manifesting a big fat booty or they're manifesting dating a celebrity. That's what they really want. But instead they go, well, that's not realistic. Call yourself out if you've ever said or thought that. That's not realistic. So I'm going to uh, manifest a text instead. Um, going from 85,000 to a million, ugh, so not realistic. Um, I'll just manifest a little bump up to 90,000 instead. Um, maybe I'm not gonna have a big fat booty, but I could manifest some, some butt shapers from Amazon, right? That's a good start. Have you ever done that? Have you ever talked yourself out of your own desires? Here's the thing. If you think too small about your manifestation, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because our assumptions manifest. So if you assume you can't do the big thing, if you assume that you have to start small, then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and it limits you. So that's what I mean when I say stop limiting your manifestation. There's really no true limits. And by no true limits, I mean like Y'all, I'm not on here saying you can manifest immortality or you can manifest turning yourself into a pur purple polka dotted fuzzy creature or you can manifest the ability to fly. Like physics still applies. We're still humans. We're on this planet for a specific time. Who knows though? Maybe when we transition to the other side, we can take whatever form we want and you can finally be that purple polka dotted fuzzy monster that you want to be. But right here, right now, like there are certain limits. I'm not a manifestation coach who's gonna come on here and say, you can manifest anything you want, and if you can't, then you're a loser. Like, I would never do that to y'all, right? So physics still applies, but with that exception aside, there's really no limit on how you can do this. There's so many stories of people intentionally manifesting huge things. There are several lottery winners who are like, yes, I used law of attraction to manifest winning this lottery. There's one person, I'd have to look it up. Y'all drop a link below if you know who I'm talking about. But there's one person who had like a very specific number in mind. I think it was like 42 million or 44 million or something. And for years, they had that figure written down on a piece of paper and they were sleeping with it underneath their pillow every night for years. I don't know if they were also doing affirmations and stuff. I ha It was like years since I read that story, but I remember the piece of paper under the pillow. So they did that for years and eventually, and when I say years, I mean like four or five years. Like it was a long time, but it wasn't that long. And within a few years, they manifested a lottery win for that exact amount, okay? I'm sure there were times when they were sleeping with a piece of paper under their pillow around like year two where they're like, is this even gonna work? But they persisted until they got their manifestation and they ended up like $40 million richer. That's why I tell you guys, don't limit your manifestations. But why are we so quick to limit them? I think part of the reason is because society kind of screws us up. I think that when we are little kids, we have these amazing imaginations and we imagine ourselves as astronauts and presidents and queens and princesses and movie stars, right? And as we get older, the adults in our life, the people around us, as well-meaning as they may be, they kind of talk us out of those dreams, you know? And and I get it. Like, they're, they're doing what they think is best for us, right? Of like, oh, you're never going to be a rock star. Gosh, when I was a little girl, I used to have this little plank, pink plastic guitar. 
and I'd like run out into the living room in front of my parents and I would just like ramp like just I wasn't hitting notes I was just like rah, 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 rah. and I would sing these songs I had written you guys know I like writing songs if you haven't seen my embarrassing manifestation trick I will link it here for you but I would write these songs and I would sing them to myself and I used to picture myself on a stage in front of all these people and I wanted to be a rock star. I did not want to be a pop star. I wanted to be a rock star. And over time, the world convinced me that that dream was unattainable for me. And I believed it. And because I believed it, that belief held true. And I never became a rock star. Now I'm a YouTube star, you know, but still not a rock star. Maybe I could do that next, but I, I, I enjoy what I do. So our logical brain limits us, okay? And I think that it happens kind of like we're very imaginative as children. As we get older, we let people talk us out of our imaginative ideas and we become these like jaded, pessimistic adults. There's this really cool example that I love to mention to people where back in the 1960s, I believe, there was this scientist, I don't remember his name, but if you're interested in the study, I can link it below. But there was this scientist that was brought in by NASA to lead a study a scientific study on children, but it was totally safe and on the up and up. Just stick with me. So NASA in the 1960s were like in this like moon race. We're trying to get to space. We're like, mm, screw you, Russia. We're going there first, you know, all just like being petty. We just being petty. And so a lot of the issues that NASA was running into was because the scientists who you want to talk about logical thinking, anyone in the STEM community tends to be very like, logical minded facts or facts kind of people. So the scientists that that NASA had hired, whenever they would encounter a problem, whenever they would come to like a roadblock and they're like, Ooh, how do we deal with this thing? We can't solve this equation. I don't know what two plus two is right. Whenever they're they're reaching this point, um, they would just get stuck and they wouldn't move forward. Right. And so NASA was like, we got to get these people thinking outside the box. And so they brought in a scientist and they're like, hey, man, why does everyone suck at this? And the scientist was like, hey, I'll tell you. But first, I need a lot of kids. I need like 1,700 children. So they bring in 1,700 children and they were very, very young children. And the scientist asked the children one question. And I think that they did it like separately or I don't know how, but I'm, di I'm guessing he didn't have like 1700 kids in a gymnasium, right? So he asked, they asked the kids like individually, um, tell me what you could do with a paper clip. That's it. Tell me what you could do with a paper clip. And the results that these kids came up with were unimaginable. Okay, their answers were everything from like the very obvious of I can clip paper to I could strap a rocket onto my paper clip and fly it to the moon because no one ever said how big the paper clip is, what it's made out of, if it's hollow and can fit astronauts inside of it. Some kids pictured the paper clip like a submarine and it's gonna go underwater and they're gonna look at the fishes and we're gonna go all the way to the bottom of the ocean because we didn't say, you know, this is a new material this paper clip is made out of and it's not gonna collapse, it's totally cool, right? They came up with so many imaginative ideas because they were so young, these kids were like four or five when the study started, that no one had crushed their little spirit of imagination yet. Then, as they got older, the scientists followed up several more times. He ran the same study a few more times on the same group of kids. And as they got older, the results are not surprising, but still really depressing, where little by little, all of their imagination went away. Little by little, as they got further into adulthood, their answers started dwindling down to clip paper. And that's it. No more flying your paper clip to the moon or going down to the bottom of the sea, just clipping paper because adulthood squashes so many of our dreams and our imagination. So what I'd like for you to do when you are figuring out what you're manifesting, what your real goals are is let your inner child take the lead for a second and figure out what you really want. And don't try to talk yourself out of it. Don't think that the idea is too big. Don't see a problem as a problem that you can't move past. Just allow your imagination 
to take the lead and believe that it's possible. Okay, this is like Disney, but we just got a little Disney magic. We got a little pixie dust and just believe that it's possible. What's also important to remember is that I hear a lot about like, oh, but these circumstances, like whenever I meet with a new coaching client, like a one-on-one -on -one coaching client on Zoom, more times than not, every one of them will say, well, I know that you've helped people manifest an SP, or I know you've helped people manifest a job, or I know you've helped people manifest money, but could you, but, and, but can I really do it given these circumstances? And everyone thinks that their circumstances are the worst. They're not, right? Circumstances are circumstances and circumstances don't matter. And here's why. Because everything that you are living and experiencing today is an output from the past. Everything that we are feeding into our subconscious mind right here, right now, will exit into our reality eventually. So what you're experiencing now, because it's an output of stuff from before, and because everything that I'm doing today is an input into my future, then the circumstances don't really matter because I can change the circumstances as quickly as I change my mind. So the circumstances don't matter. So a lot of people will allow themselves to limit their manifestations or allow their limiting beliefs to take over because of their specific circumstances. But the circumstances don't really matter when you look at it from that perspective. And then finally, it's also important to remember that everyone is you pushed out. And you know, if you don't know what that means, I don't know if I already have a card, but maybe I'll put a card here or maybe I'll link it down below, but I've got a pretty good video explaining in depth my theory on everyone as you pushed out, what that means and how it works. But for right now, just push the I believe button and believe me that everyone is you pushed out. The 3D, your reality that you're living today is a mirror of you. So once you change yourself, and I recommend doing that through self-concept work personally, once you change yourself, the reflection that's across from you will change accordingly. Okay, so I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a like, click the like button. That really does help me out a lot for the YouTube algorithm. And if you also made it to the end, drop your favorite emoji below so I know that you made it and then I can be like, yay, thanks for watching the whole video. All right, bye friends.